Hi everybody, welcome after a little break. Uh, today I would like to set up some principles of the game as I call it for maximizing your results. Uh, number one part is regarding what we have done before, motivational things, psychology, etc. Uh, so now it will be more descriptional, okay? I will tell you a few things divided in certain sections and I will take a little deeper insight to each of these blocks. So this is just the summarization part. What we need to know is the difference between aerobic and anaerobic training. That will be uh, told in one uh, part. Then another one will be um, description of influence of intensity and biomechanics well that's a very important part um, I will then also break down the intensity to a little more detail then after this um, I will talk about the composition of muscle fibers they are of three types which we'll be talking about and it is very important for people to know um, and then finally when we have all this done, I will tell you why the gym environment with free weights, machines and you know all this sort of equipment is absolutely necessary for most people to have for you know maximal results you can achieve. Okay. Aerobic and anaerobic training. Uh, main difference is if your muscles need oxygen to supply them for their work. If if you supply muscles with oxygen and you do um, intensity which is usually below 70% of the maximum of you can do however you give it the norm whatever um, basically said if you can continuously work with the same intensity for a longer time uh, it probably means it is aerobic right opposite to this anaerobic is the one when the muscles don't work with the supply of oxygen they work on different energetic systems and they usually hit uh, different muscle fibers more intensely when we do aerobic training um, many people see it as something that they burn fat with but it's not only the main reason yes we hit certain muscle fibers slow twitch muscle fibers but also at the same time we work our cardiovascular system that means that we really work our heart uh, and everything else related with the blood circulation and supply of the oxygen uptake of the oxygen for the muscular work then after this um, you know this this will never develop nice physique this is only uh, the way of spending energy this is only the type of training uh, if you consider the typical activities, it can be running, uh, rowing, um, it can be sort of exercises which you can do in the gym like uh, running on the treadmill, um, whatever kind of machines you can do with this intensity. Um, as contrast to this, you can do anaerobic training and that is basically um, resistance training in the gym or resistance training with your own body and you know that can be best achieved in the gym I will tell you later in a little different uh, a fraction of this uh, video today An aerobic training develops the muscle right so if you want to get the physique you have to develop the muscle to make a good shapes good density good structure and you need also this to burn energy if you have more energy spent than you eat it means that you can be reducing the size. Um, if you do aerobic training, uh, yes, it is very, uh, I would say, effective for fat burn, um, but just this itself will never make a good physique. It is only additional form of spending energy. Uh, of course, only if we talk about bodybuilding. I don't talk about any other sports about bodybuilding. It is necessary to have it there sometimes, it can be also achieved through resistance training because we can be moving in the zones when they're quite aerobic uh, but to be more precise uh, some people need more aerobic training than others and that differs uh, from your 
uh, body type that you have. We'll talk about that later as well. Okay, so now let me explain you one thing um, which I usually divide all our training efforts. You can take bodybuilding training from two different perspectives. On one hand side you have um, intensity, right? Intensity um, will hit all your muscle fibers you have if you do the right things, but the biomechanics, advanced biomechanics, I must say it's not only compound exercise, not only isolated ones, but as you make it in complexity. You really need to design it well because the better you are in this, the better shapes you will possibly have. And these two things are undividable. They always have to be there, full attention to both of them. Uh, they can vary differently, but this is something you really need to know a lot about. We'll get into more detail very soon. All right, so let me tell you more about the intensity. Uh, intensity consists of several things. One of them, of course, is the magnitude, the amount of resistance you can achieve. Yes, the maximum you can lift or maximum you can resist. That's only one point. Another one of them is, if you, if you lift heavy or closer to your maximum, it also depends how many times can you perform that exercise. Let's say you're bench pressing and if you can do it 8 times or 10 times with similar weight, yes, of course, 10 times will be more intensive. Then, um, speed of repetitions also matters. If you, if you develop more speed on each rep, you can, you can really achieve higher intensity with that as well. Um, then we have breaks which matter. If you have shorter breaks, of course, it's going to be more intensive because it's not only that given time what we consider, but it's also uh, the whole uh, training we're doing. If we have very short, um, well, very short, you know, it, it depends what is very short. But if we have shorter breaks, it will certainly make all uh, our exercise much more intense and then finally the very last thing which i would say is the hardest to describe is the context of training because if you work let's say certain body part let's say chest and you do some isolated exercise let's say pec deck or cable flies or dumbbell flies and then uh, you finally do presses your chest is already tired Okay, and it makes your chest work harder, uh, so you can intensify um, uh, through, you know, making different order of exercise and the choice of them. So these five things, which I just stated now, are, you know, uh, composing the picture of intensity. Of course, we can focus on one of them at the time, but all of them together really make a good sense. Okay, so let me just repeat that without explanation. It is measure magnitude of resistance, amount of repetitions with given resistance, speed of repetition, time of breaks in between the sets and the context of exercise. Now what is related to previously set things, I would like to talk about the composition of muscle fibers. Um, in some really advanced literature, you can find many, many different muscle fiber types. But we will only use three because they are commonly used in sports. And those are slow, intermediate and fast twitch. Okay, so each person is given those, you know, predispositions as it's born. Yes, but then it also depends how you train. If you have, you know, each each twitch have different type uh, of, you know, pluses and minuses. You know, they have negative and positive things. Uh, I would like to describe on what level of intensity uh, they um, have so-called firing thresholds. So, you know, how intense do you have to go to uh, engage those twitches? So let me start with slow twitches. Their advantages they uh, burn a lot of fat. This is really good. You can see uh, people dominant with slow twitch development. Uh, they are usually uh, long distance swimmers, runners, people with a very uh, high level of endurance. And yes, 
this it, this has to do with aerobic training because uh, it needs oxygen to burn and you know it burn more fat through it so yes this is a very good thing but the negative thing of them is that they are not um, so massive in the diameter of them so if you want to develop bodybuilding qualities you know if you if you care about the muscular development they will never be big they can get a little bit bigger but they will never be big big can be the other two types of um, um, muscle twitches and they are intermediate I didn't tell you that yet before about those uh, slow twitches but whatever you do if you even just stand up from the chair or if you if you're running or if you're doing really light resistance um, it will engage slow twitches until about 70% of your maximal results you can achieve um, if you if you climb over this and you're about in the region of 70 to 85 percent of your maximal uh, intensity which is moving somewhere between 6 to 12 repetitions let's say if we're talking about the resistance training uh, then you activate so-called intermediate twitches they work in different um, energetic system uh, I will not get to too much details but uh, this is probably the most potential uh, type of muscle fibers you can use in bodybuilding because they have the largest uh, diameter okay these muscles can develop to the biggest shape right so that's one of the reasons you know if you ever consider what um, you know that, that bodybuilders usually stay in those zones of repetitions it is because of this because they're hitting these muscle fibers um, very good advantage uh, they don't have very good endurance but you can modify them I will tell you then about fast switches which you always engage if you go uh, over 85% or even in so-called super maximal uh, achievements like negative repetitions uh, you know and, and stuff like this I will not get to too much detail but above 85% is fast so switch. fast switches are usually above 85% of your maximum in reality it means everything you can lift um, six or maybe five and lower one or two reps maximum it means that you absolutely burn out that you cannot do third or you cannot do fourth they just stop there and you cannot perform uh, any more repetitions with this so this is above 85 percent those twitches they also have very good uh, quality of size so if you have that together with uh, intermediate ones you can develop quite a solid bull with them and um, and to, to addition to this, intermediate twitches, you know, a proportion of slow and fast twitches are given as you born, but then the intermediate ones, they, uh, they can adapt, you know, uh, in accordance to what you train. So if you train more endurance or if you train for more resistance, they will kind of approach to that type of what you train. So they're quite modifiable, you know. Um, in practice, it means that we usually want them to behave more like fast twitch because then they get all those better properties for bodybuilding. All right. So, you know, let me just add a note to this because most people are not even ready to lift on these uh, levels of intensity because they would get injured. You know, um, you really need to be developed before you get to these zones. Uh, most bodybuilders out there they probably don't have this problem but for some you know people who just start bodybuilding or they have no sport experience whatsoever uh, it might be a little bit difficult it can be even dangerous and you know I would recommend to develop your you know stabilization system uh, um, let's just get the good habits first you know and then you can get to these kind of intensity sometimes test them um, the beginner will always respond on almost everything you give him or her whatever who it is so you know don't rush too much with this but make sure that as you advance this can never be missing all right this can never be missed there and i strongly insist uh, don't just go light if you go too light it means that you will always develop only the slow twitch and you know two other types out there and you don't even touch them so this should be your main goal do all three types of fibers you have and depending on your body type 
focus more or less on those which you are dominant in. Okay, and now finally, uh, I know that there are sort of people who really don't like to hear this, but uh, I always say, and it is mainly because of all the other things which I just told you before about the zones of intensity and hitting certain muscle fibers, you need to go to the gym. Many people think that they can just do some kind of street workout, boot camps and all this shit. Yes, they will burn a lot of energy, but they will not get the precise angles for each exercise. They will not have that equipment which gym usually offers. Also, the gym environments differ, you know, they can be shit, they can be really good, uh, but they certainly have uh, more equipment that you can ever bring outside and of course as you develop you need more resistance and that will only um, allow the gym itself uh, so please don't take it as offense but you need the gym and gym needs you <laughs> because you know it's also the atmosphere what you can sense from the gym you go there with that given purpose I know that you can say the same about going outside and having the boot camp whatever but believe me that in the gym if you have a plan, if you know what to do, and you have all this equipment which can, uh, you know, uh, get you to all those levels of intensity which you cannot do outside. How can you lift, I don't know, your maximal squats or benches or anything which would be at least similar to this outside? Do you bring this much equipment or do you do just like 100 push-ups? It will not work the same. So this is why you need to go to the gym. I'm sorry, if, you know, to these people who don't believe me or, you know, who have serious doubts I know that there will be always them uh, saying these things to me but I still insist on this and of course my own experience uh, is that I never ever did anything outside the gym to achieve my physique except maybe my previous like pre bodybuilding you know sports career which is completely different to bodybuilding anyways <coughs> so this is my strong uh, advice to all those people out there who uh, would think that they would just do these things outside.